Welcome to the second video in Unit 9. In this video, we're going to cover the Black Death, also known as the Bubonic Plague, that hit Europe, um, spread originally from Asia, and hit Europe in the late Middle Ages. So this is the same time period that we're talking about things like feudalism. Okay, um, So you may or may not be familiar with the children's rhyme, Ring Around the Rosie. So the rhyme goes, ring around the rosy, pocket full of posies, ashes, ashes, we all fall down. You may have sung this, ran around to this when you were little. Um, it is a little children's rhyme, uh, but it actually represents the Black Death or the bubonic plague. And I'm going to go through how that is. So ring around the rosy, and I will be honest with you, there are some images here that um, might not be fully pleasant to look at. Uh, ring around the rosy refers to the rose-colored ring-shaped sores that would appear on people's bodies who were suffering from the Black Death or bubonic plague. Pocket full of posies uh, represents the idea that flowers were carried in people's pockets to try to cover the stench of death. Um, a huge percentage of the population was killed by this disease. And so there was death everywhere. And so people would carry flowers in their pockets to try to mask the stench of death. Ashes refers to how many bodies needed to be burned um, because there were too many to bury. And all fall down refers to how many people died. Um, so there's an estimated population in Europe um, between the years 1000 to 1350, somewhere around 75 million people. And after the bubonic plague hit, a third of Europe died. And this was only within five years, one third of all of those people. So in 1352, just a couple years later, we see the population somewhere around 50 million. Um, so 25 million people were estimated to have died. And this is just in Europe. This also spread through Asia um, and elsewhere as well. And so millions and millions of people died from the Black Death. The fact that the nursery rhyme that represents the Black Death has lasted so long really shows you how big a deal this was. Um, the story begins in Asia with the spread of this plague. The first region struck is China, the very first place that this uh, disease begins and has begun to spread. It spreads west with the Mongols. In fact, the Mongols are going to use it um, as an original form of germ warfare, and I'll get to what that is in a couple of minutes. Um, but they're going to intentionally infect people who are their enemy. So it spreads west with the Mongols. They invaded the regions around the Black Sea, um, and what they would do is the areas around the Black Sea were huge trading cities. So there were merchants that had a lot of people buying goods, trading goods, traveling here, and then leaving here. So the Mongols, what they would do is they would go to the edges of the cities and there would be walls and they would take bodies of plague victims and they would catapult them into the cities. And you could get infected just by breathing the air. Um, you could get infected by touching the bodies. And so a ton of people would be infected with this process of catapulting these bodies into the cities. And so it is an early application of germ warfare, um, which is the use of germs or a biological weapon um, in order to infect people on purpose to kill enemies. Most of the population of the cities that they attack die pretty quickly. Um, but there were merchants who fled. They were terrified. They fled. They got in their ships. They went back home, but they were already infected. So on their ships, um, they, most of them ended up dying, but the ships still made it back to their home port. Most of the occupants were dead, the rest were already dying. So this is in October of 1347. Um, people helped them off the ship, they don't really understand how serious this disease is. And the people who helped them are going to end up getting sick. People are going to start leaving the cities. Uh, when they see that this disease starts spreading, they take the disease with them out into the countryside. Um, so people flee these cities, they carry it, they ended up carrying it into Italy, the Italian peninsula. By 1348, Italy and France were infected with the bubonic plague. Again, at this point, spreading from people infecting other people. 
Um, originally, and it will continue um, for quite some time, the carrier was a flea on the back of rats. So the way that it worked um, is the disease came from the rats, the fleas would bite the rats, fleas would then bite people, and when they bit a person, um, some of the diseased blood would go back from the rats, would go into the bloodstream, and that's how it spread to humans originally. Now, people who lived at this time had no idea what the cause was. They had no way of knowing that it came from fleas on the back of rats. Their living conditions were horrendous um, at this point in history. When they used the bathroom, they would go in a bucket, they would dump it into the streets. Uh, there was very, very little uh, washing or cleanliness. And so this is just going to make it spread even quicker. Once contracted, it was almost always fatal, meaning it almost always killed you. And it was very contagious, meaning you could infect other people very easily. By the end of 1348, it had spread through most of Western Europe. So this spread very quickly and it killed very quickly. By 1349, it reached through the British Isles and into Scandinavia. All the great cities of Europe had hundreds dying every day. As people fled to avoid it, they spread it into the countryside. There were so many people dying uh, that they couldn't, they couldn't keep up with the number of bodies. If you've ever seen Monty Python, the scene where they're ringing the bell and they're saying, bring out your dead, that's referring to this situation. There were so many dead that you couldn't even bury your own family because you're trying to stay away from getting infected. Nobody wanted to go near these, these dead bodies. Um, and so they would collect them in mass and, and either bury them in mass graves or they would burn them all. Doctors called to care for the sick might die before the patient. Um, a lot of doctors are going to get sick. And this is going to lead to um, some very poor practices, doctors taking advantage of families and priests as well. Priests administering last white rites were also victims. Uh, many priests are going to flee. Without a reason, people often resorted to strange rituals. So if you've ever seen this image, this, this shows what a doctor might look like when a doctor would go to see a patient that's infected with the bubonic plague. So um, you would notice that no part of the skin is exposed. That's why they have gloves and shoes and um, a very large jacket. Uh, what they would do with their face is they would cover their face with this mask, which you can see there in the image, that has a beak. And in the beak, what they would have is they would have different herbs. And they believed that the herbs blocked, uh, when they breathed in, the herbs would block the disease from getting breathed in by them. Um, and so they wore these funny masks to try and avoid breathing in the disease. And they would also have sticks with them um, or canes or something like that so that they wouldn't have to touch the infected. Over the next hundred years, they would be, there are additional outbreaks um, that stay more regionalized or in smaller areas. It still exists today, um, but it's very, very small scale. Some effects are obvious of the Black Death, fear, dislocation, and death. Um, people were terrified. They had no idea how to treat this. They had no idea why this was happening. Dislocation, so many people fled the cities um, and tried to get away from this disease and just the overwhelming number of dead. Some of the worst humanity came out, as you will often see um, in situations like this. Sometimes you'll see wonderful things come out of it, and sometimes you see things like this. Um, in many areas, Jews are blamed, and Jewish populations are massacred. Um, this had a lot to do with just needing someone to blame and um, certain groups were more cleanly than others and so disease may spread less in those groups than others um, and so blame was placed on Jewish populations because it was believed that because fewer Jews were infected that that meant that they were the ones who created this plague in the first place which of course is not true. Some priests began to charge to give last rites um, so people who were dying who wanted to be given their last rites by the priests, the priests would charge money for that. Uh, one long-term benefit was a reduced labor force. There were so many people that lived in Europe at the time um, that 
there were so many people to work that a lot of people didn't have work. And those who did, um, they didn't have any rights. Uh, think about the serfs. They don't have any rights. The king controls everything. They just get to live on that land. Um, so a smaller labor force is going to mean that wages are going to go up. So peasants have new power. There are fewer people to work the land, and so they get to get paid more because there aren't so many people ready to take their place. So serfs were able to gain their freedom and buy their own land in Western Europe um, in large numbers following the spread of the bubonic plague. Once the plague receded uh, or kind of went away, a new economic climate was born. Trade grew and flourished as a less populous Europe enjoyed a better standard of living. So there were less people, um, but people really began to start trading again and interacting again, um, which they hadn't done for some time. The church's influence ended up declining because of the Black Death, um, because the priests were charging people for these last rites, because the church could not explain what was happening, um, because they could not stop it, the church ended up losing some of its power and influence. So priest practicing profiteering is the idea that they were charging money um, and they were unable to stop the dying. Distrust of strangers grew and lingered in many regions, um, but we did still see a surge or a rise in trade. And so two big waves of reform are going to happen in Europe following the spreading of this Black Death. And those two include the Renaissance and the Protestant Reformation. The Renaissance, which we will talk about in this unit, and the Protestant Reformation, which you will cover next year in World History 2.